Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Welcome to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Lisa Martin, John Furrier is with me. We are at Boomi World in DC this year. Excited to have, there's going to be four really chatty people in this segment, <laughs> warning you now. We've got Mandy Dalloway, the CMO of Boomi, and Will Corkery, SVP of Sales. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's great to be here. This has been an awesome, this is day one of the main event. Partner event started yesterday, Partner Summit. One of the things that is always very resonant with Boomi events is you get this sense of collaboration with your partners, with your customers, and it's very symbiotic. So some of the numbers that came out today, I, I wanted to kind of geek out on numbers, because last Boomi World was only 11 months ago, yes. and I think the numbers we were talking about were 7,500 customers, adding five new a day. Now it's over 9,000 in over 80 countries. Your partner program is blowing up 580 partners. Yeah. Incredible growth, and Chris McNabb told John and me earlier today, this event, actually no, he said in the keynote, 5X, what it was the first event. Yes. Wow, you, yeah. and you guys all look very refreshed for being <laughs> this busy. <laughs> it's a facade. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> all right, so Mandy, talk to us about what's going on at Boomi from your perspective, the new branding is really cool. How does that represent what Boomi is delivering? We're on a growth trajectory, and we had to refresh our brand to put a new face on this business so we could accelerate our growth. This is a whole new boomy to the world. When I stood up at Sales Kickoff earlier this year in February, we repositioned the company and focused ourselves on selling solutions. And as a part of that strategy, to start to amplify this brand to really become more of a known entity in the market, uh, it was time for us to polish the brand up. You know, we had tremendous product market fit for many years. We just forgot to tell the world. So when I came on board, I can't keep a secret. So <laughs> here I am, brand new look and feel, lots of new customer stories, we're accelerating outcomes. Very clean logo, clean branding. Um, what's the brand promise? Where do you want to take the brand? What's next, where's this going? Take us through the, the vision. Great question. Uh, the vision for the business is the why we exist. We went through and you know, we deliver a connected business experience, but the real reason why we exist is to accelerate business outcomes for our customers. That is our vision. Right, we're connecting and unifying everything in a dig digital ecosystem. The world has gone digital. No longer is software eating the world. Digital is the new game in town. Boomi is well poised to go do that. That is the vision, and the, it's all about the customer and sharing their stories and the wins that they have. We're the enabling technology that drives that outcome faster and better than anybody else. We had Rick uh, on earlier, the founder of Boomi, sharing early success days. Lisa asked him uh, the background behind it all started, and he said we made a big bet and he had self-aware founder said, we get lucky, and he got lucky, and he made yeah. a big bet on the cloud. Now you guys have 9,000 customers. Last year, your number one, num number one priority was customer success equation. In the keynote, again this year, you guys are, are crazy about customer outcomes. What does that mean when you hear customer success equation? What is the equation? It's like, is it a math equation? Is it like, is it, what, what is the formula? Well, I, I think it entails a couple of key things. It starts with the product, right? And it doing exactly what people are looking for it to do. And the reality is, is most people come in and they have an idea that they want to do X and they really end up doing X plus Y times Z. And, and that becomes, that's a big part of it. So getting to understand the platform and then showing them you know, that we really care about their success, that we, in fact, it's either a win-win you know, relationship or a lose-lose. We have to make them successful. We have a tremendous muscle when it comes to customer success and our support efforts and those types of things. So just making sure that they're on the right journey, that they're leveraging the platform, that it's doing what they want it to do. And again, we're seeing so many customers come back in now because of that and thinking that they can solve so many more problems than what they originally anticipated. We were talking on our opening around um, your, your successful business model. We'd like to have you talk more about that, but in context to what we've been reporting on our, our sites in SiliconANGLE and theCUBE is Wall Street sees WeWork pull their IPO, Uber, all these big companies, you know, they buy market share, get a position, yeah. and then they try to crank the monetization. Yeah. Okay. They're not being looked upon favorably right now because that entails extracts from the customer. You guys are more on the other side of the cloud SaaS model, which is provide value. If you need more, buy more. Lower prices, <laughs> increase function. That's an Amazon-like flywheel. Yeah. So you guys are on the positive side of the SaaS formula. 
Um, as you have that, first of all, you guys all agree with that's happening, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what do you say to customers when they say, who's booming? Because now you're, you have a leveraged software business yeah. with a professional services. What does this mean for customers? Well, again, I, I would say that what it means is, is that they can come in and solve a problem so much faster than they ever thought they could solve it before. It, they're thinking they want to go on a journey, everyone talks about the journey, right? And it all, it comes in about a thousand different shapes and sizes. And with Boomi, having a layer like this to be able to connect what you need to connect, when you need to connect it, how you need to connect it, that's, and doing that in such in a fashion that no one ever really thought, and again, you said you had Rick Nucci and, these, and the founder where they thought, I just talked to him a minute ago, and I was saying, he was talking about how he, he was listening to some of the customer success stories, and I looked at him, I said, you didn't think they were ever going to do all this stuff, or, or that they could do all these things, and he said, you know what, we didn't anticipate it. No. We really didn't. And so getting them to do that, but the key, I, so, so, to be honest, so a big part of our growth, although we're acquiring lots of new logos, certainly as you mentioned, lots of new customers, a huge part of our growth is that, again, people are going, man, okay, I, I, I brought in a new SaaS application service now or something like that, okay, that's good, but boy, I've got all these FTP problems and I've got this database issue and I, I need to be able to leverage this existing uh, on-prem ERP and now I'm going to work day and I have to be able to, and it's just, it just, we see them just starting to get very creative about how they're leveraging the platform. It's opening up, you say, you know, from a marketing perspective, mm -hmm. unlocking potential, but it's really true. I, I, I saw yesterday firsthand the manifestation of the Boomi fandom. That's real. I was talking to one of your customers who integrated, use integration for a particular opportunity, kind of thought there might be some, you know, wow, there's going to be a lot of data coming in, what can we do with this? And all of the um, kind of side benefits that came from it that they couldn't have predicted, neither could have Rick Nucci, yeah. but how they're able to become even, you know, as a transportation uh, logistics provider, trusted advisors to the carriers and the shippers that work with them. Yeah. And then they're realizing, oh, actually what we're doing you know, under the hood with Boomi is making a carrier more productive because the workload is less, less clicks, et cetera. Yeah. So it's really, it shows the transformation that doesn't just stay within your customer, it's their customers as well. The sort of this snowball effect, I really got that resoundingly yesterday from the well, customer combos. One last thing, yeah. where, where, where we see the, people, the customers figure out that this becomes a common data layer for their modernization journey, yes. right? So now they have control of all this data no matter where it is and how it's going out in public cloud, private clouds, public SaaS, whatever it is. And then they, now they've got control. They can become creative with yes. the data now. They can provide new services to customers and suppliers and partners and internal stakeholders, whatever it might be. And I think that's, that's a, it, it, that happened to click for us a, a, a couple years ago and Mandy's been great about making that real and how we send the message and, it's, and we, we're really seeing it take off. Yeah, we really speak about transformation, right? That's business processes, that's customer experience. How do you take that data and build upon it using our flow capabilities and take these rote processes and start to have them automated in a way that you're driving new customer experiences, right? Employee onboarding is one that we use internally. We've talked about it before. Our NPS went from a negative, I don't know, to incredibly positive, right? That's what this technology can do once you have that data layer in we become that enabling technology to, to go drive these additional outcomes. Uh, NPS, net promoter score for the folks. Uh, Sorry, not jargon. Knowing the, yeah. the jargon. So this brings up a good point. With the new branding, um, we saw it, it resonates well. Mm -hmm. It's going to create a lot of brand impressions. Yes, And absolutely. I know you've done a great job of getting it out there. It's only going to get better. But when you get the brand impressions, they're going to want to know who is Boomi. If they know Boomi, who, what's the new Boomi going to be like? What's the plan? How are we going to scale up? Um, the messaging, how are you going to take it to market with the brand there? So our core strategic initiatives are, are really a, what's on top of mind for CIOs, right? Connection is important, the, the stuff that Will talked about in terms of on-prem and multi-hybrid cloud scenarios, right? Modernization, right? Getting stuff off of legacy. Fed has a massive opportunity in terms of modernization. We're seeing that already. Mm -hmm. You know, we were FedRAMP certified in August. We've already got our first deal in the door. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, fantastic opportunity around modernization. Transformation, the stuff I spoke about, customer experience. The one I'm particularly excited about, and this is the marketing strategy coming through, the innovation layer. We have a quick serve retailer yeah. that is now taking facial recognition when I go through a drive-through, triangulating my data with my vehicle license plate, making me on the spot loyalty offers, and also saying, oh Mandy, would you like your regular bre breakfast sandwich order? 
that is the art of or the possible. Or know if you're in a good mood or need right, a right. double espresso. Right. Yes, right. She's, she's five minutes late today. She's, she's going to storm through here, yeah, right? right? Like that yeah. level of sentiment analysis based on my voice. The other stuff we heard this morning, yes. right? We're triangulating all of that to go drive whole new ways of doing business. So that's what I find Partner exciting. Partner ecosystem is a key part of any growth strategy. Obviously you got the customer equation. I love, love the business model. You know, I'm a big fan. Um, disclose that, everyone knows that. But to be successful, you guys have a challenge. You have to grow the brand. You got to build the ecosystem, build the community with education. Pieces are in there. These are real blocking and tackling things. Right. What's, you guys, what's your opinion? What are you guys going to do with that? Give us the playbook. We've brought it all together under one brand now, right? Community, you saw this morning, the Boomiverse, the Astronaut. 65,000 people in that community, Mandy, that's Absolutely, huge. and now we are ready for exponential growth, right? We have a way to gamify, we have a way to certify and train more people. Our partners demand it. There's a skills gap in the market, in technology. That's a known fact for many years. So how do we quickly enable intelligence around the Boomi platform and, and mind trust and share. So that's something that's going to happen. So we're, we're creating this in waves. We're creating a virality component to our community, right? All under the Boomi brand. So it all becomes additive. And that was important for us as far as a growing up as a business yeah. as well. We're, we're on this fast growth trajectory and everybody's off doing their thing. So I came in and said, all right guys, let's, let's build some cohesion here. And that is going to help us as we scale this business. So it's Will, on the sales side, you're going to get a lot of pull now from the marketing. Yes. Uh, digital is a lot of organic stuff goes on digital. We know we do a lot of cube stuff. We see the data. You guys still get the leads. You got to close sales yeah. cycles. This is kind of the business side of it. Sure. How's that going? What's, a, what's an engagement look like? How fast do customers come in? Is it word of mouth? Do they talk to each other? What are some of the dynamics in the field? Well, we're seeing some of those, those times uh, shrink. It's weird. I've been here seven years, so it's my, you know, my team then was like 10, now it's 470 or something. And so we've grown very fast, but it's, uh, and, and we came in before, it was kind of like a connection deal, last minute thought, you know, oh gosh, I got an integration problem. And, and but now, it, 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 a couple years later, it started really extending because it became a little more strategic, but now we're starting to see it shrink because people realize they're bringing it in and, and they know that it's something that's key to what they have to do. W what we're seeing is, is, is it's, um, it, it's, it's something that all of our partners, our partners are so critical to helping us with the journey because we're really still just talking about one little piece of that larger pie. And so they come in, they come with, come in with us every single time. And we're globalizing, as you mentioned, all the countries that we're doing this in. Yeah. But you know, France and Germany are big efforts for Japan, um, the Fed. Those are like four areas, if I could pick, that, that partners and how we're going to those markets are, are critical. Just to follow up on that, just as you guys are getting these deals, what's, when does a customer know they have a boomy opportunity? What, is there a problem, is there a moment? Is it a certain use case? Is it like, wow, I got an integration problem? Is it integration problem called boomy? What's the, what's the success pattern that you're seeing for the wins? You know, I'm going to go back to the four that we talked about because you know, part, of, part of my challenge as a sales leader over seven years was I've said this is the most organic technology I've ever, t I've ever dealt with and represented because when we walked in, it could go anywhere. People wanted to do data analytics, they wanted to solve FTP problem, they wanted to do front end, you, you heard Olive from Sky, and she's thinking front end customer support stuff. So it really could go anywhere. Now it was always, always about managing data and, and collecting it, but I mean, it, it, it really was, it, it comes from so many places and, and the sales cycle has been you know, uh, has changed because of it. So as the marketing and the brand have evolved since Mandy's been on board, how much are you, time are you still spending describing, okay, so Boomi is, how much more brand awareness and recognition do you have now and how is that making the job easier? Because the retention, the renewal rate is really high, 97%? Yeah, well it's actually about almost 99% from our field customers and then we get OEM customers as well, about 97%. Um, so so how, how, do we, how do we keep the customers? I'm sorry. No, it's not. I mean, in terms of brand awareness and oh, brand, brand recognition, awareness. how much, you know, compare, if you compare to seven years ago when you probably oh, were having to say, well Boomi is now, with Chris McNabb said, hey, there's going to be a hundred different mentions of customer stories at this yeah. event alone. How much easier is your job in a sense? Because people are now much more aware of Boomi's capabilities. I think people realize they need, this is what I say to all of our partners and even, we're, we're talking to Dell Tech people, every single customer will invest in this type of technology over the next several years. It might be a very tactical 
thing to do, but, but call it an iPass, call it a simpler way to connect and manage and access your data. So yes, we're, we're, brought, we're over that bridge to say, okay, this is what's le legitimate. I think we're still having conversations about how strategic it is, but again, that's typically an iterative process. We, t we very rarely come in and say, someone says, oh, I'm going to replace all of this. So it is, it's I'm going to solve this problem, and then they go, oh, all right. Now, and it's architects and leaders are going, oh, well we could solve all of these other problems that we've had. Well, and if I may, they yeah. say, normally it would have taken me months to do this, and you did it in days? Yes. We're interested. Yes. Right. So that's, that's, that's the value the problem. Iterative. That, that's the value problem. It's part of the equation. Accelerate. Right? Well, the, exactly. thing that we're observing is, the thing that we're observing is that the projects are increasing, not decreasing. And the number of projects, because they can be little things. That's right. That time to value is the proof points versus the, the long monolith proposal yeah. that's up and running and you don't gestates for months and months. Well, you, you talk know. about the integrators that we have so many integrators that we work with. We were worried at first years ago, are we taking their business from them a little bit, right? Because they're, 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 they have a lot of folks who are focused on that. But what they found is, is they're solving problems faster, but they're just doing a ton more problems, right? There's, the, 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 those, those projects are growing. What I love about your business model is that, and the trend that we're covering is, it's not IT setting the pace of projects, it's the projects themselves That's right. that then dictate to the cloud scale, mm -hmm. and so I think you guys are tipping on this new, we call cloud 2.0, which is, it's completely flipped around. Yeah. Anyone, if it's a, a mission-based organization or for-profit, right. there's a project to do something right. of value. That's right. That's right. <laughs> IT is, just has to support it, not dictate terms. So this is a whole different level of thinking right. and having the SaaS business model. Right. Well, and layer in the usability of the product, right? The interface. Yeah. Yeah. We, we go after citizen integrators. Lines of business, I can go build something for my marketing tech stack. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. And the, good, uh, the veterans example is a great one on the keynote too. Right. I mean, yeah, little apps can get done, and they make a difference. Right. They create value. Yeah. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of value, this event is 5X bigger than it was two years ago. Mandy, congratulations on everything that you guys have done. The voices of your customers are couldn't be stronger. That's the best brand validation that you can get. We're excited to be here. We've had a great day one. Can't wait for day two tomorrow. Yeah. What and are we going to hear tomorrow? And all the product folks. Yes, yeah. we do, and more customers as well. We've got Olive on from Sky, for example. Yeah. Gilead is on. I think Candy.com. Hopefully, he's going to bring us some candy. Yes, they will. There's a ton of candy. Absolutely, there's <laughs> a candy right back here. Uh, it's been <laughs> awesome, guys. Thank you, Will and Mandy, so much for you, having the cube here and joining with us today. Right. Thank, thank you for you. your support. It's always great to chat with you Thanks. both. Thank you, Our John. pleasure. Thank you, Lisa. See, I told you it was going to be chatty. <laughs> for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the cube from Boomy World 2019. Thanks for watching.